I'm Pat Doris. Welcome to the story and welcome to Friday. You know, all week we've been talking about the cultural differences in Eastern Oregon. Tonight we're going to take a look at a particularly touchy issue, wolves. Many on the west side of the state where there are few love them. Many on the east side where there are many hate them. Wolves returned to Oregon for the modern era in 2008. That was more than 60 years after the last one was shot and killed for bounty. They were not brought into the state, but rather allowed to wander in from neighboring Idaho, protected under the Federal Endangered Species Act. In just three years, the federal government found that enough gray wolves had returned to eastern Oregon that they could be taken off the endangered species list there. In 2015, the state of Oregon took wolves off the state endangered species list as well, although there are still restrictions on killing the animals. By the end of 2021, the state reported at least 21 different wolf packs in Oregon, with at least 175 members. This map from Oregon Fish and Wildlife shows where most of the packs are now located. See the upper right-hand corner of the state? That's where most are found, and that's where we are headed. We'll drive 100 miles north and east from John Day in a snowstorm to reach a tiny town called Medical Springs. It's on the edge of Union County and is home to thousands of cattle. We've come to Eastern Oregon to talk about the urban-rural divide and the frustration driving the greater Idaho movement. Eleven counties have voted to start talking about moving the border with Idaho to leave Oregon and become part of Idaho. It's doubtful that will ever really happen, but it shows lots of people out here feel ignored by the big cities, which have significantly higher populations and therefore all the political power. The urban areas can decide what they think is best for everyone, and the rural areas just have to live with it. And that includes wolves. I'm not a biologist here, but it seems to me like there's three packs here around, around this area and it, it's breeding season right now, so you tell me what the wolf numbers are gonna look like here in another few months when those females have pups. Coleman Lay is a 30-year-old rancher. I am the sixth generation, and my son is the seventh. Um, my great-great-great-grandfather homesteaded up the road about seven, eight miles, about 125 years ago, and uh, built a family here and I'm the tail end of them, I guess. And my little boy and little girl are, are the seventh, so. Yeah. He has a degree in marketing and supply chain management from Boise State and loves this land and his herds of cattle. I visited during calving season. He has a thousand mama cows, as he calls them. The moms of these two little ones did not survive. <laughs> Coleman showed me how to give one a bottle of warm milk. When we were finished, I learned that around hungry calves, it's best to keep your guard up. Yeah, I think you're about done there, pal. Will they just stop or shall I pull it out? Uh, you'll hear, did you hear that air kind of go out? Yeah, that one's done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> A shot to the <laughs> to say thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, so, that's so, all I got. A good lesson for a that's reporter got, from man. the city. Really? As I recovered, Coleman talked yeah, about the greater Idaho movement. The greater Idaho movement to me like is more of the fact that there's just so many people who are so tired of like not having a say. They're like, hey, my life is basically being dictated by a completely other side of the state that has nothing, that really has no clue what we're dealing with over here. During the birthing season, Coleman spends long days checking on the young calves. He tells me this one is fine, that one is too. While Coleman's working with the cattle, he has one predator that he worries about all the time, the wolves. And around here, it's not a theoretical concern. In early February, wolves came right here to his home and attacked and killed his dog. He shared this picture with us. We're blurring out most of it. It's too disturbing to show. He said ODFW biologists inspected the remains of his dog named Dodge and confirmed he'd been killed by wolves. Coleman said it happened overnight while he slept. Obvious question, but I'm sure you miss your dog. <laughs> yeah, I miss him every day. It's not the first time wolves have attacked here. Coleman shared this picture of a cow killed by wolves and said there are others. The state does allow some pushback. 
In late February, ODFW approved the killing of two wolves near Medical Springs after three documented attacks in pasture lands. On top of that, three more wolves have been legally killed in eastern Oregon this year for attacking livestock. Yeah, this is a major problem. Like, I don't feel safe with going on walks with my dogs. I don't feel like my family, like I got to have an eye on them at all times. Coleman turned to Facebook to share news of his dog's death. But it was more of the fact I wanted to post that to realize like, hey, this is what we're dealing with. Like we're, it's, we're really struggling. Like, you know, there might be some folks that hear or see of a dead cow picture. You know, they're like, hey, the wolves killed that cow. They're like, well, so what? I don't have cows. I don't, cows are cows. That's kind of what happens out West. Cowboys deal with, with wolves all the time. That, that's just what happens. But then when you add a picture of a dead dog on your on your page or whatever they're like wow that that resonates with a lot more people because it's you know it's family pets dogs cat like you know it, they're not going to discriminate if they bet you anything if they found one of the barn cats you know right up on the hill like they're gonna they're gonna kill it you know so it it's just gaining some more awareness to what what's truly going on uh, but you were saying there are some haters too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's some people that, you know, that that almost think that a wolf has more right to live than you or I. Like, and I, I had it firsthand. Like, they, you know, the some of the nasty comments you'll get, and you know, I get some of these people are just sitting behind a computer acting tough or whatever. They're gonna come, you know, kill your family or whatever if you ever harm a wolf and. Have you had threats like that? Oh yeah, yeah, and it's, you know, I don't, usually their names like Wolf Lover 242 or something like that. There is a wolf kill compensation fund set up by the state legislature in 2011. It's a mixture of state and federal tax money that pays for prevention measures to protect livestock from wolves. It also pays for animals that are dead or hurt or missing. In 2022, the fund paid $393,682 for wolf attacks and prevention. The payout since the fund began totals $1,187,000. That's not much comfort for ranchers like Coleman Lay, who wishes Oregon's leaders on the west side of the state knew what it was like to live with wolves on the east side. Soon, he'll take his cattle up into the hills to graze on the edge of the stunning Eagle Cap wilderness, and he'll be in the middle of wolf country. There's just so many wolves in one specific area, and I don't, people probably already know, I don't like wolves, but I also see my opinion's not the only one that matters. So what I am asking or saying is too much of anything is not good. Um, if we've got, if we have way too many wolves in one area, there needs to be ways or avenues ranchers or outdoorsmen or sportsmen alike can finally have to limiting numbers. Just today, by the way, the state of Oregon put out an update on wolves around Medical Springs. At one point, it appeared there were two packs attacking livestock in the area and in a place called High Valley, which is just a bit to the north. Well, the state now says it's actually one group. They've named the wolves the Black Pines Pack. By the way, wolf supporters point out that wolves are vital for regulating populations like deer and elk. And thanks to a ruling by a federal judge last year, wolves are again covered by the Federal Endangered Species Act in central and western Oregon.